now available from Polygram Video. NFL's Feel the Power puts you in the middle of the action and unveils the hidden power of the NFL's elite. The NFL's Greatest Games delivers the play-by-play -play power of resilience in two volumes, the Ice Bowl and Super Bowl III. With NFL's Greatest Moments, you'll catch the most powerful images of pro football. Throws his pass, caught by Clark! It's caught out of the air by Franco Harris! Coach Shulin has won number 325. Experience the power of laughter with NFL <laughs> talking <and> Follies. <laughs> Okay, throw a fake ball and keep the real ball in your shirt. You can't use more than one ball. Mom! NFL Throwbacks brings you the power of tradition and links future stars with heroes from the past. Lock and load, baby! Lock and load! <laughs> Collect your favorite teams and witness the power of teamwork with the NFL official video yearbooks. Roll in! Roll in! Roll in! Collect them all and feel the power of NFL films on home video. New Edge Pro Gel, official sponsor of NFL Team Highlight Films. Edge Pro Gel will give you a shave so comfortable that no other gel or foam can beat it. For a great, comfortable shave every day, try New Edge Pro Gel. Save your skin. Mr. Ford, what are you looking for in a new coach? What are you a winner. A winner? Yes. You yeah. haven't confirmed anything. Well, well what? what brings you to Detroit? How do you say you? Well, it's me, and I'm here, and uh, you can put two and two together and know what it's all about, I'm assuming. Abby, what do you feel about A couple of weeks ago, I told you that uh, we were going out on a search and we were looking for a winner. I think we've done just that. At every step on every level of his 30-year coaching career, Bobby Ross has been a winner. And Lion fans have reason to hope Ross will add more jewels to a crown that already includes a collegiate national championship with Georgia Tech in 1990 and an AFC championship that earned him a trip to Super Bowl 29 with the San Diego Chargers. Wherever Bobby Ross has been, he's been a winner. He's won, and, uh, and he's, he's carried that throughout his coaching career. Nobody's going to outwork him. Uh, nobody wants to win any more than he does, and uh, he doesn't even know there is a word quit. The last 30 minutes of this season, and you've got to decide what you want to live with for a whole year. And right now, you've got a long year based on the way we're playing. I think he always instills a will to win in the players. Every coach attempts to do it, but you know, guys really want to play hard for him because he's very honest. He's got you know integrity, uh, and he's a, he's a motivator. Play your damn defense and play like you're enjoying the game. Get after some people. Do the things that you're supposed to do. You can get back in this football game, but you execute the way you're capable of executing. From the moment you meet him, you know that he works extremely hard. You know he's going to be straightforward and honest with you, and he expects the same from you. He's not one of those guys who seems to find the spotlight as much as some of the other really good head coaches in the in the NFL. But I think he has his way of getting it done that that really works. Great job, fantastic! You rose to the occasion. God bless. I tell you what, I don't know what to say. I'm just so damn happy. Happy. And without. Much further ado, I'll introduce you to our new coach, Bobby Ross. Thank you. Ross begins his tenure as Lions head coach with clearly defined team goals. If you haven't gotten yourself to the playoffs and ultimately to the, to the Super Bowl, uh, there's an empty feeling inside. And I can tell you from, from this very moment on uh, that that's going to be the direction and the goal of our football program uh, here with the Detroit Lions. For the Detroit Lions, 1995 was a year to remember. 
With the NFL's most explosive offense and a hard-hitting veteran defense, the Lions won their last seven games to advance into the postseason for the fourth time in five seasons. The success of 1995 gave promise for 1996. But in week one, a late Vikings touchdown spoiled the Lions' debut. Johnson steps away from the pressure, long for the end zone, wide open, Carter, touchdown! What happened there? Somebody lost Chris Carter. The loss was an omen of things to come. In the home opener, the Lions came out hitting. And displayed a knack for the big play on both sides of the ball. Week four brought the Chicago Bears to town, and Scott Mitchell greeted them by throwing four touchdown passes. Scrambles to the left, now lets it fly along left sideline. Mark got it, and he'll take it in. Touchdown, Lions! An offensive back fell down, and Johnny Martin streaks in for the touchdown. The Detroit defense shut out the Bears in the second half, and with their record even at two and two, the Lions took aim at Tampa Bay. Oh, let's just take this over, man. Let's take it over right from the very beginning. Dominate all three. One, two, three. Dominate! And dominate is precisely what the Lions did, as the defense forced four turnovers and logged a pair of sacks. Scott Mitchell's two touchdowns fuel the offense in the 27-0 route, the Lions' first road shutout since 1983. Home away from home. This is our outdoor stadium. The Lions said goodbye to Tampa and hello to Pontiac, where they went for a Silver Dome record 10th straight home win. With 28 first half points, the Lions got the record with their third win of the year. And though the scoreless streak of the defense ended at seven quarters, the Lions were off to a four and two start and all eyes were focused on another run at a division title. But the early high hopes turned to hard times as everything that had gone right suddenly went wrong. Bobble, 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 intercepted. 30, 25, Ray Agnew to the 20, 15, 10, 5, and touchdown. Do you believe that? And like the previous two years, the midseason nosedive put Detroit in a hole. In 1994 and 95, however, the Lions had snapped back and made successful runs to the postseason. And each year, the turnaround began around Thanksgiving. The opponent for the 57th Thanksgiving Day game was the Kansas City Chiefs, another team fighting for its postseason life. The lead changed hands five times in a game neither team could afford to lose. Right ahead, Barry Sanders, up to the left side of the 10. Barry switches hands to the five, takes it in, touchdown! And like most Lions games in 96, this one went down to the wire. Huge play here. They burned seven and a half minutes of this drive, says Walter Dunn. The thing that may help the Lions here is some lady luck. Second down and goal to go. Tony Richardson is the fullback in the eye for Marcus Allen. 
Number one, Marcus Allen over the top. Touchdown. 40, 46 seconds to go. The tough loss dropped the Lions record to five and eight, ending all hopes for postseason play. It also signaled the end of the Wayne Fonts era, an eight-year run that produced two NFC Central Division titles and the team's only NFC Championship game. While the Lions didn't live up to their lofty expectations, 1996 was a season of record-setting individual performances. It was also a year when young stars emerged to join veteran superstars who are hungry to bring a championship to the Motor City. When the Lions closed out 1996 on a Monday night in San Francisco, Barry Sanders put on another unforgettable show for a national audience. In the race for top NFL rushing honors, Sanders trailed Denver's Terrell Davis by 161 yards. Number 20 responded with a season-high 175 yards on his way to his third NFL rushing title. Barry Sanders off the pitch right. Oh, field, 45, breaks 40. Barry, 35, spins free. 30, 25, middle of the field. 20, 15, 10. Holy mackerel, down and in. Touchdown. Lions, what a run by Barry Sanders. That one may be one of the all-time best. 1996 marked a year of milestones for the unparalleled runner. His 1,553 yards made him the first running back in NFL history to run for 1,000 yards in eight consecutive seasons. Another first for Sanders will occur in 1997 when Barry will share the backfield with a full-time fullback. The only purpose in the fullback was just to build a little bit more flexibility to things, a little more diversity, and a little bit more deception to the offense. And I think the, the fullback gives us that. Another blocker to open holes along with offensive lineman Jeff Hartings, Kevin Glover, Ray Roberts, Mike Compton, Scott Conover, and tight end David Sloan should help Barry Sanders continue his climb to the top of the NFL's career rushing list. Team breaks a tackle to the 10, Barry to the 5, Barry in, touchdown, Lions, holy mackerel. Touchdown, Lions, Barry Sanders, the best in the business. But while number 20 may be the best in the business, the Lions offense can't live by Barry alone. I need one more, baby, a little bit more. In 1996, Herman Moore confirmed that he is in the elite class of NFL wide receivers. With that rare combination of strength, grace, and athleticism, Moore followed a record-setting 1995 with his second straight 100-catch, 1,000-yard season. In just six years, Moore is already the Lions' all-time receiving yardage leader with three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons on his resume. 
While Moore was maintaining his usual standard of excellence, Johnny Morton continued to emerge and enjoyed a breakout year in 96 that included career highs in receptions and receiving yards. Morton moves to wide out opposite Herman Moore this season after spending his first three seasons as the slot receiver in the Lions offense. We feel very good about Johnny Morton developing into a very good receiver over there. Early on, we think people it's very easy to try to, to, to roll coverages to Herman. That's going to free Johnny up. But as soon as they find out how productive Johnny will be, it's going to make it more difficult to take Herman out of the game. Taking Morton's place in the slot will be number 33, Glenn Milburn. We're working with uh, Glenn right now in, uh, in several different areas. We know what he can do as a running back and, uh, and a receiver coming out of the backfield, and those still be some things we're doing. He will be a very versatile person uh, in, in our plans, and uh, uh, we're just trying to, to, to get him ready for a, numerous, a number of different ways to, uh, to, to get him involved in the offense. Strictly a kick returner in 96, Melbourne's expanded role will provide another weapon for the arsenal of quarterback Scott Mitchell. Hindered by injuries in 1996, Mitchell proved that when he's healthy, he is among the game's best. You know, I think Scott has, has proven that he's, that he's big time in this league. I mean, you know, he's had some outstanding seasons. Uh, they've, they've moved the ball a lot here, done some really great things in the passing game. Thanks to an array of firepower that few teams can match, the Lions' offense should continue to soar in 1997. The Detroit Lions' defense that Bobby Ross inherits is coming off a year of transition. Injuries force the Lions to continually shuffle their lineup, and from that emerged a group of young players who showed flashes of brilliance and whose continued improvement is one of the keys to the Lions' success in 1997. I think it is a young defense. I think it's an aggressive defense. Uh, uh, I think it can come along and be a good one. Leading the way is Robert Porsche, who turned in his finest season as a pro. Primarily a defensive tackle in 1995, Porsche moved to defensive end in 96, and the result was a different path to the quarterback. Number 91 established personal bests in tackles and sacks with 10. Another beneficiary of the defensive shuffling up front was number 94, Luther Ellis. After spending his rookie year at end, Ellis moved inside and responded with a career high in sacks and became an effective every down tackle. Ellis' presence will be welcomed by a new defensive coordinator, Larry Pecatello, who joins Ross's staff after three seasons in Cincinnati. Not only do I know Larry Pecatello, I'm our, our coordinator, and have known him for many years, but his ball club defensively with the Bengals last year led the National Football League in forced turnovers. Pecatello was the defensive architect for three Washington Redskins Super Bowl champions and looks forward to a healthy and productive Lions defense in 1997. I think the injuries that they had last year are, uh, are exactly what they are last year. I think this year they're all physically sound and should, have, uh, and should start the year in a physically sound manner. Despite missing the first half of the 96 season with injuries, number one pick linebacker Reggie Brown returned in time to display the speed and savvy to play the pass and the size and strength to stuff the run. 
Reggie Brown, a lot of talent, uh, fast, good size for, for a linebacker, uh, has all the tools to be a, a bona fide player in the NFL. In the middle, Stephen Boyd returns healthy after injuries cut short an impressive five-game audition in 96. A bounce-back year is also expected from Antonio London in 1997. A force against the run or as a pass rusher, London and number 97 Tracy Scroggins combined for 16 and a half sacks in 1995 and look to measure up to that standard again under Bobby Ross. Together, the duo is expected to provide the pressure that produces big plays. And big plays are something safety Van Malone has made his specialty. Well, I think we're going to move Van Malone to strong safety. I think it's more of a natural position for him. Van is a physical type of player. He likes to hit. I think the closer he is to the line of scrimmage, the more production we'll get out of him. Malone anchors the hard-hitting secondary that embodies the spirit of this young Lion defense. For the first time in years, the Lions have the potential to field a defense to complement their awesome offense. Ignoring a new era of franchise relocation in the NFL, the Detroit Lions have recommitted themselves to Southeast Michigan and their fans with an agreement on a new stadium to be built in downtown Detroit. This is a great day for Wayne County, the city of Detroit, the Detroit Lions, and our fans. And while we knew we wouldn't get the type of deal that some of the teams have gotten by packing up and moving to other states, we felt it was very important for the Detroit Lions fans to know that we were staying in this area and that we wouldn't leave. And I believe that this stadium side-by-side -side project is going to be a wonderful start to the 21st century. This bold move to the future links the Lions to their proud past. It's a return to the city the Lions called home when they won their last NFL championship in 1957. In one of the most lopsided championship games in league history, George Wilson's Lions defeated the Cleveland Browns 59-14 on the strength of four Tobin Road touchdown passes. While Lions fans celebrate the 40th anniversary of that triumph, a new generation of Lions fans can look forward to a new generation of Lions stars that include 1997 first round pick Brian Westbrook. With a reputation as a punishing hitter, this All-American has the new Lions coaching staff eagerly anticipating his presence in the defensive backfield. Well, if he signs early and he participates in our training camp, at Saginaw, I, I think you know he can. We can get a lot of production out of him. I think he could move, move right and be a potential starter. The Detroit Lions are coming off a season of growing pain, and although they stumbled in '96, a solid nucleus of talent has a new coaching staff looking forward to the '97 season with great expectations. From what I've seen from, from talking to these guys and being around them, I think they're really hungry to win. It's all got to come together, but we feel like uh, that's why Coach Ross came here, to uh, be a contending team and to get back in the playoffs and have a shot at going to the Super Bowl in the near future. We know there's firepower and uh, you know we, we, we've got very high expectations not just to win obviously but to win the Super Bowl that's our ultimate goal. Our goal is to be in the top of our division going to the playoffs and Super Bowl. We're, we're gunning for Green Bay they're the standard setters they're the champions right now so that's what we're going to base our work habits on. We started off last slow last year snowball we never got it back on track uh, but at the tempo that we're working now we don't anticipate a start like that. The mission is clear. Employing a combination of veteran superstars and rising young stars, the new Lions coaching staff will provide a blueprint for success, 
based on a solid foundation for the future. New Edge Pro Gel presents the Detroit Lions Ultimate Performance of 1996. The Lions' best all-around display of the season came in Tampa Bay in a Week 5 divisional meeting. The defense recorded a shutout, keeping the Bucks out of the end zone, while themselves scoring on a 98-yard Benny Blades interception return. On offense, Scott Mitchell tossed two touchdown passes to wide receivers Herman Moore and Johnny Morton to complete the 27 to nothing blowout. 